Uh, one of the things we do behind the scenes is our system tries to find breakpoints and failure points within the compliance system on the internet. And uh, what is that compliance system? It, it exists in lots of different areas. One of the main areas is at ICANN. Uh, ICANN gives contracts to registrars, which in turn sell domain names. And these, uh, these agreements are all spelled out in public. Uh, there are rules they have to follow. There are, there are terms that they have to abide to. And uh, one of those is collecting the uh, who is information, the, the owner information for a domain name. And it's, uh, it's called the WHOIS record, and every domain name has to have one. Unfortunately, criminals forge these records, and they obfuscate these records. So ICANN has a system called the WHOIS data problem reporting system. And in one of our tests for failures and breakpoints in the Internet Compliance System was to test this system on a large scale in the last few years. And what we found was the system was seriously lacking. It was about six years uh, old. It hadn't been changed, modified, upgraded. And uh, it failed at a certain point, at a certain uh, number of complaints. And we were filing all these complaints uh, as we got them in, sometimes as many as 10,000 a day. And what we found is that ICANN system at the time couldn't handle more than maybe 4,000 a day. Now, in a rapidly expanding internet, this is a serious problem. So, uh, we address this problem directly with ICANN, and since then they have upgraded the system, and they've created a bulk interface to, uh, to submit bulk complaints. So there's no longer a problem with the uh, timing out at the end, you know, during a 24-hour period with 4,000 complaints. So that's one of the things that we've done to, to find out where the breakpoints are and then fix them. You know, uh, some of the things that we also do is, law enforcement or uh, private business or government in general may not always be aware of the way that a certain portion of the internet functions. So we will take it upon ourselves to, to help them out with that and give them data w where appropriate. And uh, we've had a lot of successes in some areas. As far as philosophy goes, one of the things I try and get across to people in dealing with spam is that spam is really the least important and least interesting part of the puzzle. Okay, spam is just an advertisement, and what I'm really interested in are transactions. Okay, you getting junk mail in your mailbox is not a transaction. A transaction doesn't occur until you click on a link and go to a website, until you call a phone number, until you hand over personal information, buy something, give somebody, uh, you know, account access to your accounts without you knowing, or download a virus. Okay, that's a transaction. Just getting spam is not a transaction. In order to conduct the transaction, the perpetrator needs a website, okay? And a criminal is going to want to have as much control over that website as possible. So what they're going to want to do is not just control the website, but actually control the domain name. And, and as, as, much, as many of the resources that uh, support that domain name as possible to support the, the criminal flow of money. And uh, this is where the registrars come in. This is where ICANN comes in. Because in order to get a domain name, you have to go through a registrar. In order to become a registrar, you have to go through ICANN. And what we found in our research, and uh, as Chandra pointed out so well, is that many of the illicit players out there on the Internet are actual organizations. They are ISPs. They are registrars. They are resellers. They're real brick-and-mortar companies. Okay, it's not just a phantom on the other side of the globe. And there's a, there's a clear reason for this. They're running a business, and they need their resources, and they need their resources to be stable. And the best way to keep the illicit money going is to control the transaction resource. So this is why at New John we spend a lot of time talking about the registrars, and we t spend a lot of time talking about uh, ICANN policy toward the registrars. And recently we issued a report that demonstrated a number of registrars were failing in their obligations, their contractual obligations with ICANN. And we're trying to get as many of those as addressed as possible. In order to address that, ICANN needs a competent compliance staff. And just uh, a few weeks ago in Brussels at the ICANN meeting,
the compliance director, David Geezer, was talking about the lack of resources. He didn't have enough staff and he didn't have enough resources to handle the volume of complaints and the size of the internet as it is now. And unfortunately, David Geezer is gone. Um, and we were working with him on a regular basis. And uh, I've also found out in the meantime that there are a lot of vacancies uh, at senior staff at ICANN. Now, as, uh, as was suggested by the caller, uh, at, at Gigalaw, the internet's just going to get bigger with new GTLDs. And if the compliance staff as it exists now can't handle the current structure, we're in a lot of trouble. So that's an area that really needs some attention. Now, uh, as part of this discussion, we, uh, I was asked to review this report from um, ESSEC, the ICANN Security and Stability Advisory Committee. This is a very, very good report. Um, that concerns the way that registrars and registration can be abused. What is missing from this report are the resellers. The resellers are not discussed in this report. And a reseller is a party, a company, that a registrar licenses to sell domain names under their accreditation with ICANN. And there is very, very little control over these parties. They're virtually anonymous and unaccountable. Now, there's one section in the, uh, in the ICANN accreditation agreement that stipulates a, a reseller has to identify their sponsoring registrar if requested. But that's it. So if I ask a question of a reseller, who's your sponsoring registrar, and they blow me off, I have absolutely no recourse, OK? Because I can only complain about a registrar that has an agreement with ICANN. If I can't identify that party, I can't go any further. Now, there's about 900 or so accredited registrars. Somebody told me that there may be as many as 300,000 resellers selling domain names. And this, this is a huge part of the problem because, in essence, the, uh, the wolf has been allowed inside the walls to do what they want. We have these parties that are acting as if they are registrars, and a lot of them just funnel many money to criminal entities. There are many resellers that we're tracking that do nothing but support uh, lucrative international drug trafficking trade. That's all they do. Now, and this brings me to the next point. I would say the biggest portion of the problem that, we, that we've identified deals with uh, prescription drugs, the sale of illicit prescription drugs on the Internet. This is not only fueling the, the domain problems and the who is inaccuracies, but they also use malware. They also use intrusions as part of the tools of their trade. So all these other problems that people experience, and, and money laundering too, all these problems that other people experience on the internet are tied to the illicit drug trade as well. So this is really something that needs to be looked into in more detail. And as, uh, as Chandra also pointed out, there's a, there's a perception out there that the illicit players on the internet are in murky foreign countries and um, we can't get to them. But our research shows that they need the support of the U.S.-based internet. They need the support of U.S.-based ISPs and registrars. And the, the reason for that is obvious. We have one of the largest and most robust networks in the world and we have the most number of people connected to the internet who can be potentially victimized. So we can do a lot of cleaning up at home before we even start worrying about the illicit parties overseas.